I think we are live. Good morning, everybody. And we've got some people entering on my Zoom as well. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, we're going live in Zoom and we're going live on Facebook for day one of what I refer to as deep dive. These are gonna be 30 minute sessions. And good morning, Anne. Hello. Um, so some people are gonna be coming in on Zoom and I am broadcasting live. Here's how these are gonna go. We're gonna go about 20 minutes live on Facebook and then I'm going to um, go off of Facebook and just be in the Zoom room for anyone who has come in um, through Zoom so that we can do some question and answers and people come up and talk and not feel like the whole world is watching them. So that's how we're gonna run these deep dives. Today's topic is sleep, which is a really, um, it's just something a lot of my clients struggle with, a lot of people struggle with. And I was actually inspired to wanna to start with sleep in this deep dive because of an article that came across my newsfeed. Um, there's been a couple articles out lately about people using melatonin to help their children get to sleep. And um, there was a 530% increase to calls to poison control centers because of melatonin overdoses. So during this pandemic time, people, you know, a lot of children are really struggling. And so apparently parents are using melatonin because they think it's safe to help their kids get to sleep. A lot of us try all kinds of substances to get to sleep. Uh, and we'll get into that, but we're gonna do a few things today. First, I'm gonna talk about the link of stress to sleep, why it's hard to get to sleep when you have a lot of stress in your life. Secondly, we're gonna apply the pressure-free method, the three steps of pressure-free, specifically to sleeping well, so that you have identified your targets, which you want with your sleep, your triggers, and then I'm gonna give you some tools so that you can start to sleep better. Um, and then I have some homework for you. So if you're in this challenge with me for the next seven days, every day I'll have a, just a little something you can do right away to start to improve whatever our topics are each day. Um, and then we'll go off, off Facebook and we'll actually go um, into a live question and answer time together. So I will keep noticing um, if I need to let people in here in the Zoom room and let's get started. So um, sleep and stress, why is it that so many people when they're stressed have difficulty sleeping? Um, or you have difficulty sleeping and you don't really attribute it to stress. I certainly didn't attribute my poor sleeping. First of all, I slept pretty well most of the time, but every once in a while, I'd have one of those wake up at two or 3 a.m., can't get back to sleep or want to get to sleep because they have something big happening the next day and having trouble trying to get to sleep. So how about you? Do you have trouble getting to sleep or is it one of those like two or 3 a.m. you're wide awake deals? Everybody's a little different here, um, but it's, it's fascinating how pretty much everyone I talk to has either one of those things happening to them, either occasionally or chronically. Stress is the real culprit to why we have trouble with sleep. And I just wanna go a little, little bit into that so that you have an understanding physiologically of what's going on. Because I certainly didn't know this prior to 2010. I didn't understand the link of stress to sleep other than, of course, if you're stressed out, sleep could be difficult. But here's the why behind it. For if you're a why learner and you wanna know the why behind things. When we trigger the stress response, so the fight or flight stress response, there are actually two floods of hormones that go out at different times. The first flood of hormones are called catecholamines. I call it a cocktail. You're now under the influence. And the side effects to, to that first cocktail of hormones um, does a lot to your brain. It actually wicks fat and glucose out of your brain cells, dehydrates your brain, and it pulls it from your extremities too, which is why you might get sweaty palms or cold hands or cold feet. Um, cold hands, cold feet, people will think immediately thyroid issue, but actually it happens almost every time you trigger fight or flight. You're wicking fat and glucose 
from your extremities, including your brain cells. What's amazing about the human body is that a few hours later, and actually the timing is, is unique depending on how many, how much of this stress hormone release you, you have and what's happening in your day and what you're triggering over. But at some point, your body and mind says, okay, the threat is gone. Now I need to fix these brain cells. I need to um, power up the extremities. So a second flood of hormones goes out called glucocorticoids. Glucose, which is sugar, is gonna go out to feed the cells. And cortisol is, has all kinds of little things that it does um, to help get the salt, water, and sugar content of the cell back to normal so that fat can transport and you're powered back up. Now your brain needs a lot of fat. Your brain is mostly fat. Um, and so it's really important to, to, for this second flood of hormones to go out. Some people today are trying to do things to lower the cortisol release. If you've triggered the adrenaline, you want the cortisol release. Our bodies are magnificently made. So we don't really want to monkey around with that. Some people specifically smoke weed in the evening to try and get to sleep because that can lower your cortisol level. But if you've triggered fight or flight, you need the cortisol. So one of the reasons they do that is because cortisol is your wake up drug. Every morning before you're about to wake up, a little cortisol goes out to help you wake up. However, if you've triggered the stress response, let's say you've come home from a day of work and something annoys you or bothers you in the evening, or you have an argument with someone, that's when, depending on the timing again, this cortisol later is gonna go out and either keep you from going to sleep or wake you up at two or 3 a.m. It's your wake up drug. I was sharing this with, I, I love my teen clients, you know, because sometimes they'll just, they have no filter and they'll just tell me what they think, tell me what's going down. And, and one of my teens was like, immediately got it. They're like, okay, so if I don't release the adrenaline, then those other hormones don't go out and I can sleep well. And I'm like, yes. By the way, I didn't even realize how impactful pressure-free would be for people trying to get a good night's sleep until I noticed my own situation and our families. We started sleeping better. One of my sons just kept getting up earlier and earlier, teenage son getting up at like 5 a.m. every day. It was amazing. It was like, finally, we were getting a real night's sleep, not a sleep that we had to induce through any chemicals, not a sleep that we had to, uh, you know, even have like warm milk or, or some sort of thing, you know, to help us get to sleep. We didn't even think about it anymore. And to be relieved from having to think about getting a good night's sleep is incredibly powerful. So some of my clients report, oh, wow, like I have, I actually get a real night's sleep now. So I have hours in my day that I never had before because I'd be too tired or I'd be just too fatigued even in the morning. Do you, here's another question for you. Do you wake up fatigued? Do you wake up with energy or do you wake up hitting the snooze button, wanting to stay back in bed, just, just really exhausted. And all you were doing was hopefully sleeping in the night. Well, if you've triggered the stress response, instead of your body repairing, renewing, regenerating, you've been spending all of those hours just dissipating stress hormones out of those cells so that you can get back to normal. So your body's working on something other than actually repairing and rejuvenating. That's why you're tired in the morning. Your body has been working hard. So it's really amazing when you start to, to truly break the stress response, not release those stress hormones and allow your, your mind to actually get to sleep well. Another thing about marijuana that I think is really important, a study came out, oh, I think it was about six months ago. Um, because so many people are using it to relax at night or get to sleep, um, the human brain does not actually get into a real sleep if you've taken marijuana. So I've had clients who, who wanna break that pattern because they, they feel like they're starting to become a little dysfunctional because they're doing that every single night and it's, it's 
causing a lot of effects. And one of the reasons is because you don't get into a real sleep. The stress hormones also cause you to not be able to get into a deep delta wave sleep. So um, allowing your body to really get into a deep delta wave sleep is the key to sleeping well. I wanna bring up too that a lot of people are wearing watches to track their sleep and, and that can be really helpful. However, it doesn't actually monitor stress hormone levels in your body. So you might be getting these hours of sleep and it may even show that you're getting to, to REM, to deep, deep delta wave sleep, which is fantastic. However, if your body's been working during that time to get the stress hormones out, you're not actually resting the way you could. So that's another real key thing. Um, we have a lot of apps today to help us track everything. And for some of my clients, I actually tell them to take off the watch because it's the tracking that's causing them anxiety. If they see that they don't get a good night's sleep, they have this fear that they're not gonna have a great day. So it's, it's um, sometimes the, the, all these wonderful tools we have are actually causing us anxiety. So monitor that too. Um, so let's now apply, that's connection between stress and sleep. Let's apply the three-step method of pressure-free to gain, so I really want you to gain clarity about why sleep is important to you. So yesterday I gave a conference, by the way, it's on YouTube. And if you want a copy of the conference, you can go to my conference link. We had some really great speakers and Gary Barnes was on there. Gary Barnes is a phenomenal, he's just a phenomenal person <laughs> because he's just so real. And um, one of the things he shared was um, using the phrase, so that, so that. So when you think about sleeping well, you wanna get a good night's sleep so that you can blank, fill in the blank. You wanna get a good night's sleep so that you can, sleep is so important. It's like one of our basic needs in the hierarchy of needs, one of the basic needs, it should be one of the easiest things we could do, but we are struggling so much with it. So getting a good night's sleep, what does that really mean for you? It's important to write down a couple targets. If you're taking notes, grab your pen and just write down a couple of things that, that getting a good night's sleep could mean for you. Maybe you feel better in your day. Maybe you have more energy in your day. Again, maybe you know that you're really resting, rejuvenating and, and no longer so worried about and anxious about your sleep. What are some of those targets for you that getting a good night's sleep could, could make this difference for you. So targets are the first step of pressure-free. Um, and this one's specifically talking about sleep for you. Second are triggers. Triggers are anything that make you feel these emotions, angry or annoyed, anxious or afraid, ashamed, argumentative, and I'm going to throw in one that I usually only do work on with my private clients, but this is deep dive and we're going deeper and that's abuse. And when I use the word abuse, I don't necessarily mean physical abuse or harsh, really harsh abuse, but I want you to look at little subtle things. For example, I'm very environmentally sensitive, especially to smells and sounds. And so if I smell something burning, there's fear. Well, there's a reason for that fear. When I was a little girl, I almost drowned and, and I had no clothes. I had to wrap up in a blanket. I was at a camp, campsite. I had to be close to this campfire and the blanket caught on fire. So I almost drowned and I almost burnt when I was four years old. My father saved me in the drowning. I was down and caught in a whirlpool and literally being sucked in, down into a river and he saved my life. And then I almost burned on the campfire. So the smell of burning to this day for me, it's something I'm sensitive to. It, it, it's an influence in my environment that, that is abusive in a way. It definitely triggers me. Um, so you might have a smell or you might have a sound. In our old house in Battle Creek, I can't tell you how many nights we'd be lying in bed. I go, somebody's in the house. <laughs> 
Now, our house was broken into a couple of times, okay? So, so there was a reason that, that I was kind of on high alert. But if I'm on high alert, trying to go to bed to, at night, I cannot get a good night's sleep. I've triggered adrenaline. So environmental things, anything that is, is kind of getting, getting in you and, and causing you to feel tightness. So your body can be something that can help you identify these triggers. Your face can help you. Like if you get concerned and you have furrows, if you have furrows in your brown, that's constant stress coming here and causing this to happen. So, you know, are, when, are you, is your face tight? Is your, are your shoulders tight? Is your, are your, is your body tight in other places? Some people come and inst instantly start biting their nails or, or their cuticles. If you're a nail biter, it's a sure sign you're triggering fight or flight, like a lot, because you're trying to come here for comfort. If you binge eat, if you comfort eat, we come here for comfort. So in the evening, if you find yourself coming here for comfort, maybe you're, you're eating late at night too. People say, don't eat late at night because that will keep you up. It's not necessarily that that's keeping up. It's the fact that you've triggered the stress response, which is why you want to eat at night, if that makes sense. So identifying your triggers, noticing, especially, I want you to focus, because part of deep dive is that we're just going to specifically focus each day. I want you to focus on that period of time about five hours before you're going to sleep. So if you go to bed at 10, then starting about 5 p.m., start to notice what is really happening in that time period. What is really going on? And um, see if you can identify triggers that are happening in those five hours before you get to sleep. That will really help with the 2 or 3 a.m. situation. So we've got targets, triggers, last are tools. Tools and the 10-second solution. I'm gonna go deep into some tools for our last 10 minutes with Q&A, but I wanna give you some tools right up front and give you your homework. So your homework is actually linked to, to, to the second step. To identify those triggers, see if you can find at least three of them, something that makes you feel one of those emotions that could trigger the stress response in you. So angry, annoyed, anxious, afraid, ashamed, argumentative, and any sort of little environmental abuses. So see if you can identify three things that happen in that the five hours before you go to sleep. If you can start to notice what makes you feel those things, things can start to turn around for you. One of mine was the dinner cleanup. Starting to clean up after dinner, I get about two thirds of the way through and I would get very annoyed. I just wanted the job to be done. And, um, and so I had to get over some things like my way is the right way. I asked for help. I would dance in my kitchen. I like interrupted that. So now we'll move into tools because interrupting the stress response is the key to pressure-free living. I'm going to say that again. Interrupting and breaking the stress response is the key to pressure-free living. It's the key to a great night's sleep. I can't tell you how many of my clients say, thank you so much. I finally get a great night's sleep. I wake up in the morning feeling great. Don't we all want that? To just wake up in the morning feeling great? So here are a couple of tools for you. The first tool is to relax your abs. When tension, when your body starts to tension, especially if you notice your body tensing up, if you relax your abs, it will be easier for you to relax your face, your hands, your feet, your shoulders. If our abs are tight, it's very hard to relax the rest of our body. That's because this is our body armor. You're trying to protect yourself. So many nights I can remember lying in bed and thinking about something happening the next day and my whole body is tense. My whole body is tight, thinking about this thing I have to work on the next day. So if you can relax your abs, that's really gonna help blood flow, nerve flow, everything start to open up for you so you can be relaxed. So there's tool one. I'm gonna give you three tools. Tool two is that if you're lying in bed and you're having trouble getting to sleep, that's a moment when you could trigger the stress response all over again because you're anxious because you're not getting to sleep. 
Or if you wake up at two or 3 a.m. and say, oh, I need a good night's sleep. You're starting to get tight. Notice my face got tight. When you're lying in your bed, just assume success for yourself. Assume that you're going to get all the rest that you need in order to accomplish a great day tomorrow because we will immediately move into negative fake worry. We will create these scenarios that are completely fiction and, and we've built up this whole piling on of all the bad things that are gonna go down because we haven't gotten a good night's sleep. So instead, as you're lying in your bed, I want you to assume that you're, you're gonna get enough rest for tomorrow to be fine. And that's truly the case for us day after day after day. We get enough rest for the next day to be okay. But if you can start to really just settle and, let, and allow yourself to think, okay, I'm gonna get all the sleep that I need. It's gonna be just fine. I use that phrase a lot, it's going to be just fine. You can also turn it into a question. How can I get a great night's sleep? And when you ask the question, the key, the secret sauce to asking an empowering question is to not try to answer it. Don't force an answer. Just ask the question to your brain and your magnificent brain is gonna find answers for you. I don't even know what they're gonna be. Maybe all of a sudden you put on some sort of beautiful music or you put on a meditation or who knows what you're gonna come up with, but your brain is gonna find an answer to help you get settled, to help you feel relaxed, to help you feel okay. So assume success for yourself, that's two. The third one is just before you're going to bed is a very magic time for your brain. So time in your brain is in theta waves. And theta waves is first thing in the morning and last thing before you drift off to sleep. That is when your subconscious and conscious minds have the most connection. I learned this from Dr. Joe Dispenza. That's when you have the, the most connection. And so when you go into theta wave period of time, just before you're drifting off to sleep, what you put in your brain is important. What you're thinking about is important. So, and also when you first wake up, same thing. This is what I have my clients work on just before they're going to sleep and just before they're waking up. First of all, for millennia in almost every culture and religion, what humans did in those bookends was pray. So they were moving into gratefulness, into asking for help and support, and for asking just to stay alive. <laughs> and so what can you put in those bookends of your day that is prayer-like? If, if you are in a, or practice a certain religion and you move into prayer in those periods of time, especially gratefulness, then your brain, your theta wave time is going to be really useful to you. But here's what most of us do. That, those are our anxiety points. Just before we go to sleep, we start thinking about all the things we have to do the next day, or we're worried about our kids, or we're worried about the health of someone that we love. Like we, we move into worries in those time periods, or we wake up worried about how all these things we have to do in a frenzy when we first get up. So Bookends are important. It doesn't have to take long, but you're setting yourself up for success, basically, as far as getting a beautiful sleep and then having a beautiful day. So those are your three tools. I'm going to go off of Facebook now and uh, see how I do that. And we're going to go into question and answer. So tomorrow, let me see, what is our, I'm not even sure what our topic is tomorrow. Let me look and see if I, have, I don't have a cheat sheet here. Uh, so tomorrow we will be at 8 a.m. again for another deep dive specifically on a topic, and I will see you then.